Barry Liberman, who's the managing editor of Dumbo Feather and the head of an amazing collective yeah. project called the Small Giants, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, very happy to be here talking to you today because you're someone who makes conversations happen. Hmm. And Dumbo Feather is a, a magazine about conversations with extraordinary people. What do you think is the power of a conversation? Um, connection. That's what the power is, where the power lies. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a, um, a weird thing to say, but I, I think it's almost becoming revolutionary. I think also what, what differentiates what we do, um, for me what's important in a conversation is that there's reciprocity, yep. there's give and take, there's me in there and you're in there. Yeah. It's not me with a list of questions. I mean, you've got questions that you want to ask me, but they're questions you want to ask someone anyway. Yeah. Conversation. <laughs> I, I knew what was going to Sorry. Connection um, there, right to the outside connections. world. <laughs> um, but I think the thing, like, conversation can be small talk, but for me, what's revolutionary and exciting and nourishing and important is deep connection, meaningful conversation, which are the building blocks, I think, on where we find ourselves and the other person in this sea of humanity. Mm. And one of the phrases that you and your team use a lot is enlightened hospitality. And I think in terms of, as you say, honouring the space, one of the reasons why everyone comes into the van, and I'm going to um, ask people who have been in the van before to make a comment in a minute, so get ready for that. (laughs) Um, The honouring space is because we are welcomed with hospitality and warmth. Can you explain maybe a little bit about what you mean by enlightened hospitality, which I think is a beautiful phrase. Yeah, we sort of, yeah, we, we, when my husband and I do anything that we do, we sort of, when we first started with Small Giants and me also as a person, I like to create, it's natural for me to create environments where people feel safe. Mm -hmm. That's, um, something I love to do and know how to do. I don't know why, but that's just part of me. And what happens when you create those safe environments is people can contact... Sorry, I touched my mic. People can contact... (laughs) Um, People can contact something inside themselves Mm. that's a little bit stripped of all the veneer of the masks we wear all day. And um, enlightened hospitality is... An idea, I mean, we're inspired by Danny Meyer, who's an amazing restaurateur in New York, and he's written books about this kind of idea that you're just really bringing your humanity to service and that you're welcoming human beings into sharing a space with you and you want them to feel that that they are welcome and that um, you're also here to help them feel safe and good and nourished and happy and... If they want to be vulnerable, they can be vulnerable. And yeah. I think it's where creativity happens for me. Yeah. Some people need friction and tension and cold spaces and angles and all of that. Um, like this round table. I need. I know. The, it's yeah. very, we're surrounded by soft furnishings. Uh, yeah, it's very, I'm into that. It's very soft. You know? yeah, <laughs> it's I, interesting that you say, is it Danny Meyer? That yeah. idea of online hospitality comes from New York. Um, do you think we need these things in big cities more than in other places? I think we need them in life, Everywhere. in general, mm. from your home. Yep. To I love it in public spaces yeah. because we're all drawn to enlightened hospitality. That's just um, a sense of bringing joy and compassion to another person. Maybe the New York version would be the customer's always right, <laughs> um, and and probably. But but it's also amazing concepts like write the last chapter mm-hmm. have you read the book no so there's this amazing concept in danny meyer's book about writing the last chapter so if you, and you can just apply it to life not just enlightened hospitality but if something goes pear-shaped and someone's really pissed off when they leave the restaurant as his example you always have the opportunity to write the last chapter so how are you going to do that And for us, we think about that with the van, we think about it with small giants and business dealings, with anyone that we interact with and we talk about it with our team, how are you going to write the last chapter if something doesn't go well? It's actually not a point of friction, tension and that, you know, fist to cuffs and it's actually, well, where do we want this to go? And how do we want to feel about it at the end? And how do we, and the person 
we're dealing with want to feel about mm. things at the end because that's actually within our power. Mm. So that's one concept of enlightened hospitality that I really admire. Yeah. yeah. And, and thinking about how we like to feel about things at the end, for those who have been in the caravan before, I don't want to <laughs> single you out too much. How, you. What, no. what, yeah. <laughs> I'm not pointing, but you know, Georgina as well. What has brought you back to the caravan more than once and how do you feel when you leave? Like, What is the last chapter of this for you? Um, Sorry to put you on the spot, but we are in such an intimate I space, and I know. <laughs> I'm happy to go for Georgina first. Um, for me, um, as Lisa mentioned, I think did you? I'm st- I've worked at a writers festival as well. So, um, in the times I've been in here, I've seen a lot of emotion. It's really yeah. quite an emotional, sensitive. As space. you said, connecting to people's humanity is just actually talking to one another yeah. about. An issue is so important and something that you don't often get in an auditorium, but you can do when you're directly sort of staring into the eyes of your audience. Mm. Yeah. A bit confronting, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. But that's what, like, when life gets interesting. Yes, I know, and it's it's quite funny because often when I have come in as an interviewer, the first thing I've said is, thank you for being here because it is very confronting to agree to go to something that only has an audience of five. And me personally, when I go to a comedy show, for example, and I know it's in a tiny venue, I have the fear, <laughs> you know, like what if the comedian heckles me? And I think coming into, oh, you know, they're the you person where... Want it. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, maybe that's a conversation for another day. But that's it's scary and to yeah. know that you're coming into a space where there's only going to be a very small audience and you can see the size of the space is I mean it's enormous for a caravan but it's small for a festival event that's a very scary thing to do and um, I've said the same to our artists as well because they are used to talking to an audience of 70 150 450 2,000 people and for them to come and look directly into the eyes of five or six people and have that you know, really one-on-one interaction is quite extraordinary and a lot of them have commented that yes, some of them, some of the artists we invited didn't want to come because they found it just so far out of their comfort zone or they didn't really get the concept and some felt scared but came anyway yeah. and left and like uplifted and yeah. had the same sort of feeling as the audience when they went out as well. We're not scary. No, you're not scared. And as soon as you come in, obviously, yeah. it's so literally comfortable that it, you know, it does create that space straight away. That we have short gets bread. into it. We have, we have short bread. The conversation, the conversation can feel scary. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. it can, like, I think a lot of people avoid it mm. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas I live and breathe it. <laughs> I, just, I just, all I've ever wanted to do since I was a little kid was have meaningful conversations. So... I'm pretty extraordinarily fortunate that I get to do it mm. for my job. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a job because it just feels like who I am yes. and, um, and what I want to do every day anyway. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I <laughs> love it here and I keep coming back to the Millie Walk of Doubt. Um, and I don't find it at all scary. I mm. love coming, I love being so close to the writers. Mm. And uh, in a small group, and if you want to just say something, it's I find it so much easier in a small group. There's no way I would get up and ask. A question. <laughs> yeah. Much as I'd love to, I just wouldn't. But yeah, I feel much, much more relaxed. And also, writers are such nice people. <laughs> <laughs> They're always so nice. So when you're sort of up close and you're just a few people, uh, and they're usually nice people too, it's um, it's much easier. And I won't talk too long, just one other thing. Mm, I just think of that. I have this little quote on my poor little stand mirror, but it said, um, there's no such thing as conversation, it's just intercepting monologues. And this, uh, and I sort of think that's fairly true a lot of the time, but in here it's not, because everybody's mm. really interested, so... It is a conversation because you're interested in what the other person is saying and they're usually interested in your question and so it's a real proper conversation. Oh, good, I'm glad because yeah. I find that that saying is quite a cynical one. Yeah. Yes, I find it very cynical. You know, and, and it can be the experience but and then you're not in a conversation. No. If it's intersecting monologues. Well, I, sometimes I have to check myself that I'm not, not doing that. I think it's really easy to do. Mm. Um, just... Like people just speak and then say what you want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
as opposed to being genuinely interested in that yeah. per- other person's story. Yeah. So how, I mean, you have the, the ultimate conversationalist. Oh, really? How uh, in our everyday lives, when we do live in you know, situations where there's a lot of small talk and yeah. intersecting monologues, what advice would you give for people hmm. like me? How do, you, how do you get into a meaningful conversation if you haven't invited someone into a caravan to do it? <laughs> like, you know, when I pop out of the caravan, how should I try and engage in that way with the people out there? The people it's, I come across. It's so funny. I've never been asked that conversation, that conversation, that question. Oh, good. Oh. Keeping on your toes. <laughs> so, I think for me, a real conversation happens when you're very kind of um, sort of sort of centered in yourself enough to really want to know about mm. the other person. And I'm like spilling over always with questions for other people so I think if you find it hard and if you're shy or if you struggle with it just take a deep breath and just give room in your mind for that other person to arrive in your mind and then questions will come just ask the person about themselves about their lives and not in a way that's kind of invasive and intrusive but in a way that's coming from your heart center Mm. Yeah, which can be hard if you're a head person. I understand all of that. Can those are the challenges people have? Yeah, you know they're not used to engaging, but I think it's a worthwhile struggle. Yes, you know because when you engage with another person in a meaningful conversation, it can change your life. It changes my life every day, really. Um, and it's to not be afraid. I think maybe people are afraid of other people. That's hard advice in some ways, yeah. just to sort of say, don't be afraid. Because if someone is feeling fear or shyness, it's, okay, it's so kind of a very hard thing to go, oh, yeah, now yeah, I'm yeah. okay. Okay, you know. so breathe into it. Know that it will be there mm-hmm. for you if you feel that. Breathe into it and a leap of faith Mm. you know trust that engaging with another person could yield enormous Mm. fruits and and, um, be a space where you find yourself and the other person Uh, it's a magical thing Mm. a meaningful conversation and anyone can initiate it but you just kind of kind of have yourself in there but you're not the protagonist you know you're you're, I think if you're shy that is an easier way to have a conversation to ask Mm. But then don't fall into the trap of not <laughs> showing up. You know, if you're shy, also yeah. put yourself in there yeah. a little bit. You it's, know? True. Yes, that's true. it's true. A conversation means you haven't just barraged someone mm. with questions, but you've said, yeah, you know, i sorry with the mic again. Uh, I was <laughs> touching it. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I, I can connect with that because in my life, mm. blah, 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 blah. You know, you you put yourself in there. What? One of our contributors, Mike Bartlett, we did an event, Dumbo Feather did with the School of Life, and it was all about the art of better conversation. And two of the techniques that he spoke about Ah. that I really loved is, it's not just your responsibility to to be interesting. Yeah. And if it's not, if it's not a meaningful conversation, walk away from it. Yes. Um, And then the other one was the art of silence which I really struggle with. <laughs> but they, he talked about it and then he made everyone go and have a conversation using that technique of ask a question and then wait. Don't have the next question, you know, spinning in your head. Because you, the other person can see it in their eyes and yes, I just really love that. Can. Like breathing, mm-hmm. breathing, breathing through it. Absolutely. And who knows what will come out you of it. You know, them. I'm not dissimilar to you in that I'm always bubbling over with thoughts and ideas and questions and it's a wonderful a fullness of you but in my job and and as I grew up and became more of an adult apparently um, breathing into a silence and really allowing someone to answer your question that's a beautiful thing you know I agree yeah I love that point you just made about um, both parties need to be yes. interesting so I mean I've been in situations with people where I feel like the lesser person because the conversation is boring and I think oh. I'm such a boring yeah. person, oh. this person is not riffing off me at all and you sort of start to go into performance mode. Oh, yeah. and it's like drawing blood out of stone. Absolutely. Like you feel like, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, and you're constantly yes. like, oh, hang on a minute. No. Yes, and then it's sort of in my very early 30s, and I'm still in my early 30s, but so it wasn't that long ago that I had the realisation that actually some people 
they're just there, the ones who are boring. I'm quite an interesting person, I have an interesting life, and so if it's not working, then it's probably not about me, it's about the energy between us. Yes. And so then and I really developed... No, it doesn't mean, mean they're, boring. they're boring. It's actually, just that there's no... That the energy's just not there for whatever reason or okay. the personalities don't connect. And, you know, you come to the realisation, again, as you say, maybe as becoming a bit older, that actually That's you okay. can walk away without feeling like a failure and it's just kind of... Yes. I tried. It's done. And the other yeah. thing is it's meeting people where they're at because sometimes mm. the energy isn't right then. Yeah. But you'll go back and have a conversation with them and it's okay. So yes, I'm that's sure true. Barry has found it in a job she's gone to have to re she's revisited a conversation, you know, to make sure that it's right or you know that we get absolutely and everyone gets a chance to and things can go down to write the last chapter. Yeah, write the last chapter. Mm-hmm. Things can go down the rabbit hole, mm. you know, but that's all right. Like we're human beings. It's not yeah. about going in to have some perfect connection. I am talking about like the ultimate life changing moments where conversation is meaningful and it's intersecting and it's like blah blah blah. blah. But it can just also be everyday life. Yes. But the more you can have meaningful conversations, the richer your life the will be. The richer your life yeah. will be. It feels a bit meta that we're having conversation about conversations <laughs> and caravan conversations. I'm just wondering if anyone else wants to make a comment or has a question. Too scary. Feel free to judge. I know. You'll be judged on the quality notice. No. <laughs> <laughs> safe space. Uh, I don't know your name actually. Rosie. So nice to meet you. It's a very safe space to have those conversations. And thank again. you for coming, Rosie. Yes. You've been amazing. And thank you also. I feel like your team has been so brave in experimenting with this space and with this platform. Um, I think it's been a good experiment. And we've become the number one fans of the caravan. Yeah. It's quite extraordinary. At our staff meeting every morning, we talk about our day's highlights and someone always says, I was in the caravan oh, with so-and-so. So it's, been, it's been a very big feature in our festival, so it's been extraordinary. Um, and just coming to that word extraordinary, I mean, Dumbo Feather is all about meaningful conversations with extraordinary people. Who are extraordinary people? Mm. What do you mean by that? How do you find them? And how do you know that someone is extraordinary? I don't want to be weird about my answer because it's... Go, go out there. You're in a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be definitive. I, I'm okay, not, we're yeah. not trying to be definitive when we say that, mm. in that we have, the, uh, we have the sort of knowledge of what makes extraordinary. And if you're in our pages, that's pretty much our curation of extraordinary on the planet. Yeah. Um, I think my grandmother was extraordinary. Um, I, Probably the guy that served me coffee today was extraordinary, really. I mean, all of our stories are rich. For me, extraordinary is often a person who in the fullness of their humanity and the fullness of their failure, their successes, their experiences, their life, they've stepped up in some way um, to live a life of meaning and purpose, a life of passion, because Dumbo Feather is, is more meant to be like a little map of people who, who are living a life where these things are, are a part of it, passion mm. and purpose, and you can too. And it is extraordinary when people find their passion and live their purpose yeah. because it makes the world a better place. So it's not what they do that's extraordinary um, or that there's this particular recipe to extraordinary. Mm. It is just that we are celebrating that extraordinary like story and that person who often um, it's someone who can talk about it as well the ability to talk yep, about their absolutely their journey to tell the story yeah did that answer the question yes it did <laughs> <laughs> are you teaching your son to be a good conversationalist <gasps> he's great <laughs> is he he was great he we is actually watching, we were watching the performer out there and he was telling me all kinds of stuff and he's a communicator he's a totally. big communicator in fact all three of my children do you think children Shock have horror. A, just more innate ability to connect than no. adults or no, do you think it's about the individual individual yeah. different ch- well dan and i always said oh my god what if we had like an introverted, <laughs> liberal voting, <laughs> accountant. <laughs> what would we do? And no. you know that children do rebel. Yeah, so totally. No, it's totally. what you're saying. Totally. Go to. <laughs> no, but I think because we encourage a lot of conversation yeah. with our small people, they and they, I hope they feel heard. Mm. I think that 
um, Mossy, my eldest, was my first biggest best teacher because he would be like, you're not listening. And I went, oh, wow, okay, I've got to remember to do that too. <laughs> not just instruct him along the way, but to really... Listen to him. Yeah. Hard to do. Yeah, it can be hard to do. I think that's a lovely note to end on. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, Thank for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Love your so conversation. Much. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody, for